Um, our next session is Can Change Management Help De Water Group Save Water? Uh, very, very, very precious resource, water, as I'm sure you all agree. Uh, we have three ladies up on stage. We have Maike. Maike is a change manager and consultant at Delaware. Her customers are mostly active in the utilities industry. Her motto is, if things don't go right, go left. I like that. Or there is no such thing as too much communication. And a fun fact about Maike, every th even though she's Belgian, she does not like chocolate at all. I wish I had that problem. <laughs> Thank you, Maike. Sophie, where are you, Sophie? There you are, yeah. Sophie. A warm welcome to Sophie. Um, is a team leader for investments in the distribution and supply division at De Water Group. Every drop counts, obviously related also to the resource. Um, and Sophie lives in Limburg, which is often described by Belgians as the friendliest province and one of Belgium's most friendly bicycle paradises. Mm -hmm. I should come cycling with you. And Caroline, who will have the pleasure of orchestrating this conversation, is a senior manager and business lead for change management at Delaware. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you, Caroline. A fun fact, she just moved house. <laughs> That's a pretty stressful undertaking if I ever knew one. Yes. Over exactly. to you, Caroline. Welcome. <laughs> Big change as well. <laughs> exactly. OK, good. So let's try, right, uh, dive right into it, uh, Sophie and Mike. Um, Michael, we'll start with you. Maybe it's good to give a little bit context about the mm -hmm. project. So what can you tell us about the Water Group as a company and, of course, about the Leaky program? Okay, good. Let's start uh, at the beginning. Uh, I would say I think we can all agree that the climate is changing. That's something that we feel every day. Uh, last year in Belgium, we had very severe flooding. But the summers before that, we had actually extremely dry spells, uh, for lots of periods with droughts and, and not enough water, where actually we were asked by drinking water companies to, yeah, manage our water usage and, and be responsible about it and don't uh, use uh, drinking water to wash your car or to fill your pool. And uh, actually, climate is changing, but drinking water companies need to be prepared for that. And the Water Group is a Flemish drinking water company, actually the biggest in Belgium. They have 3.4 million customers, so that's a lot of customers. Uh, and they have 1,600 employees, uh, a lot of them who are on the road actively connecting people to the network and um, repairing leaks. Um, they have 34,000 kilometers of pipelines, and that's important because that will be uh, part of the conversation uh, today as well. And um, why is that so important? Because I don't know if you know, I didn't know. Uh, when I open up my, my tap at home, drinking water comes out. I never thought of the process that goes behind it. Uh, but what happens is actually between production of water and opening your tap at home, a substantial amount of water gets lost. And in Europe alone, the average percentage is 23%. That's huge. Uh, and uh, the Water Group wants to do something about it. Uh, it's also an... Uh, well, they started the program before it became a question by the government as well uh, to drinking water companies do something about your usage. And that's why, yeah, that's one of the many reasons that the Water Group came uh, to us and uh, asked us to help with the Leaky Project, which is what we're going to talk about today. That's the name of our action plan against water loss through leakage uh, in the 34,000 kilometers of pipes and uh, to help produce the amount of non-revenue water, so that's water that gets lost through leakage. And that's important because it has an impact on the environment, it has an impact on society, but there's, of course, also financial consequences for uh, the water group. And uh, the leaky team uh, has an important aim, and it is to uh, detect leaks quicker, to fix them quicker as well, and if we can, to prevent it too. Yeah. In a nutshell. Okay. So a seven-track project was created a couple of years ago. So that was quite complex. Eh? You talk about all those different news way, new ways of working, but also implementing new technology. So, Sophie, how did 
we structure the, the program? How did we organize that? Because governance, of course, is key eh? if we talk about these kinds of uh, programs. Indeed. Uh, the program contains dozens of different small projects, but we group them into seven action tracks. And five of those action tracks here on the screen are um, meant to be uh, for detecting and repairing leaks quicker. And two of those action tracks um, are meant to be uh, to avoid leaks. Um, and all those action tracks focus actually on adopting new um, uh, tools on uh, making processes better or whether um, tearing down data silos. But the glue between all those action tracks is actually the change and the people management um, because it's all involved of those action tracks. So. We, we couldn't, yeah, for, forgot it. Uh, we really need that part to cover all that. Uh, so the people and change management is a track that overarches all the others because in every one of those tracks, so people need to uh, adopt new tools or or uh, work with more data or adopt themselves to, to new processes or to changing processes. So the change management, uh, which Maike and Caroline, um, which they are involved, uh, is the glue that holds everything together in our leaky program. Yeah. So, um, quite a big, important project uh, plan, not only for the water group, but also for the society. So, um, it seems quite logic, but um, why Ali, was not everybody on board with Leaky? Why was there a need for change management? You talk about the glue that holds every, everything together, but of course you have to motivate people. So, mm -hmm. how did we tackle that? What was the strategy behind it? You're absolutely right when you say it's an important uh, program. We are very much aware of um, the fact that we should treat water with care, like Mike said, for its strategic reasons or environmental reasons. Water is in between uh, a scarce product. Um, uh, aside from that, it's a shame that water that gets produced gets lost. So there are also financial uh, questions about it, like Mike said. And the Flemish government recently uh, imposed uh, strict targets to, to us, but not only to the water group, to all the uh, Flemish um, water companies. And yet, uh, myself, I'm a responsible for um, a more efficient uh, replacement um, management. So we have 34,000 kilometers of uh, pipelines. We can't open up Flemish uh, on, on, a, on a whole month or a year. It's, it's not possible. It's not possible in time. It's not possible uh, with, with uh, our colleagues. It's not possible uh, with budge budgeting. Um, so we, we need to work smarter. And when we talk about smarter, we talk about um, data. Um, yeah, that's the clue. That's the clue and the glue uh, data. Yeah. But um, I brought along a picture for the people in the room. Um, the people you see working on the road, they, the technicians, they are not used to working with data. We are asking them to do something new. Uh, they love their job. They're very proud of what they are doing. Uh, but it's a, it's a big step for them. Uh, besides, um, what we need to know as well is that we're not just talking about working with data, we're talking about tools, uh, new tools that they need to use, we're talking about processes that are changing, so it's a lot happening at the same time. And uh, we've heard about change fatigue this morning in this morning's session. Well, actually, the Watergroep is, is a changing company as well. Uh, they've gone from regionally driven to centrally driven. Um, so that, that was happening too. Um, and uh, they are uh, implementing a new ERP system as we speak. So there's a lot happening at the same time. So people sometimes say that it's been a bit too much. One of the other challenges that we faced actually was that the Water Group hadn't done uh, change management <laughs> on its projects before. So we were pioneering uh, with the Leaky project. Uh, and that's, um, that's also something that we felt. Um, but um, 
we want to get everyone enthusiastic at the Watergroep. Uh, the CEO also says everyone is leaky, everyone can play a role in leaky, and uh, that's a message that we try to get across uh, as much as possible, that everyone can contribute to uh, helping to save water. Yeah. So, Michael, you already mentioned it a little bit. Eh? So, it's uh, different levels, different stakeholders in, our, in the organization who are in, on board. Eh? A lot of people are impacted. It's not only white collar workers, but also the first line workers who are really important. So, how did you, how yeah, important were they exactly, and how did you manage to target them? Because for them, eh, they, they, they like to do their work. Eh? As you see on the mm -hmm. pictures, they're really proud of how they do it. So, how did you manage to reach those people and to motivate those people to step into this new way of working? Okay, I think perhaps, Sophie, perhaps you can start about the data. Yes, first um, and our then. technicians on the road have a crucial role because when they are uh, detecting and fixing leaks, mm -hmm. they provide us with a lot of data, with essential data. We need to uh, um, manage the priorities to replace uh, the pipelines. So the data teaches us about the conditions of the pipelines, about the kind of material that is leak sensitive, about the causes they they see on, on the terrain, um, and much more. So we try to involve them as much as we can so they really, really, really uh, adopt that their input is very valuable to us to make the right choices at the right, at the right time. And they, uh, at the moment, they don't always um, realize uh, that the impact of data gives us um, such valuable information that we need to make uh, clear it to them. I think they, they won't believe that we talk about them Today. Here today, <laughs> um, they would be proud. Yeah, that we're talking absolutely, about them absolutely, today. absolutely. Yeah. There is definitely a, a willing uh, to be involved. I feel it. I feel it as a real change uh, when I look to uh, two years ago, for example. But not everyone is at the, at that train yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that fast. Yeah. So we yes. still have a long way to go. Indeed. To, to make uh, the, the people aware of the importance of data and how this reflects back into the company and actually uh, helps to uh, helps with the strategy of the organization. Uh, how does this uh, climb back? So, but uh, of course, we know that communication is very important, Mike. So, I know that in a lot of companies, communication towards first like first line workers are is difficult. Uh, uh, how do you actually tackle that with uh, the Watergroep? It's a challenge. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Uh, we see the technicians. We we really kicked off in uh, 2020. I can uh, tell you that uh, in what happened in March 2020, I think you all know. Uh, so technicians didn't come uh, to the centers before where they used to start, where they used to have team meetings. They just jumped into, um, into their uh, vans and they drove off from home. So we lost a lot of communication channels with them because we were unable to bring them together. Um, so we needed to be a bit creative. We started with uh, virtual Q&A sessions, also with leadership, and it's been appreciated both by technicians but also by the leadership because they didn't have the opportunity to talk to the people, to feel what lived, what they felt, how they, where they found things were difficult. And at, at, at last there was a platform where they could raise their voice and they've appreciated that. Uh, and of course we, we worked a lot on digital communication mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we've worked on an infographic uh, that shows them, and I heard Sophie say they are involved in data. They want to, yeah, they, under, they start to understand that it's important, but what they don't know is that what they are filling in on their computer when they are in the field, it has a direct impact on what Sophie sees in her reports in Brussels. So uh, we, we raise awareness about that through videos, through uh, infographics, through, uh, uh, yeah, uh, posters. Uh, uh, of course as well, uh, but a lot of digital communication too. And 
um, working closely together with the great, fantastic ladies from the communication team at the Watergroep. I love working with them. We were the first big change management project and they were very cooperative. Whatever we asked, uh, we could get. So we launched a, a SharePoint site, um, one of the first SharePoint sites at the Watergroep for a, a theme, uh, a themed site where we, we, I have full access rights as a consultant uh, and, and they even needed to convince ICT, but uh, we can upload everything. Um, I heard um, the words openness and transparency as well this morning. Um, you can find the reports from our steering committee. You can find KPIs, uh, monthly KPIs, even on leak repairing times, which is a discussion point often. Uh, are they really, uh, are we on track? Are we not on track? So there's a lot uh, available there uh, to make sure that people uh, are involved. And what's also important is that we need to adapt our language to these technicians. Sometimes they don't speak uh, Flemish uh, or they only have a limited knowledge of Flemish. So uh, we needed to learn not to talk uh, to people in the same way. So uh, to the steering committee, we can talk about KPIs, they know what it is, but uh, to our technicians, uh, KPI, it doesn't ring a bell. So we needed to translate some of the messages into an easier to understand format. Yeah. Okay, so communication is of course important uh, to raise awareness, to make people understand about the why, the narrative. Uh, but of course, I think there is different people who have to be involved. We also need to, to uh, it's a hier hierarchical organization, you need to follow uh, the structure. Um, so of course, uh, uh, you need to involve other stakeholders. So Sophie, how did you tackle that? How did this happen? Um, there are two things that are uh, very important uh, to get uh, the, the engagement. If we talk about leadership, you have to make sure uh, you have an enthusiastic and visible project uh, sponsor, someone who helps um, the process um, promoting uh, uh, throughout the whole organization. Um, because Leaky is a strategic program, um, there are five directors of the water group involved in the steering committee, including the CEO Hans, we just can call him Hans. <laughs> and Hans is even willing uh, to um, free up his schedule for uh, coaching, changing activities. So he's really, really into the, the Leaky program. And uh, now we have bimonthly um, um, appointments with, with him, uh, calls with him, and he's always willing to help us uh, to promote um, important messages throughout uh, the company. And in the second place, we need involvement uh, from bottom up. Um, so a, prog a program needs also um, a name and a logo. You, you can see it over here. Uh, with the baseline, every drop uh, counts. Uh, we send out a survey to our um, uh, colleagues and uh, they just could uh, fill in um, name su suggestions for the program and Leaky has one. Uh, there's a whole branding uh, around it and um, every drop counts and leak everybody is Leaky. Uh, it's it's uh, running through our veins at this moment. <laughs> But we still have uh, a lot of work to do, but um, at, at, at uh, yeah. those ways we try to involve uh, uh, everybody in the organization on the Leaky program. Yeah. So I hear that uh, Hans Hoosens is a really active and a visible sponsor Indeed. and you have really great branding of your program uh, with a really nice logo and a baseline that everyone understands and mm -hmm. which is really uh, comprehensible. Um, but we also hear, uh, Maike, uh, you said it at the start, that this was not the only change, uh, strategic change that is happening uh, at the Watergroep. Um, so you also wanted to have a view on different changes uh, so how did you uh, tackle that? We already heard the heat map uh, yeah. exercise today. So I think yeah, we also used it. So um, yeah, what was the impact of those different projects and how did you manage to have a clear view on them? 
uh, it's a complex environment. Uh, I would say so, like we said, there's Liki is just one of the many strategic programs running at the Watergroep at the same time. Uh, we've got digital meters uh, being installed at people's homes. Uh, we've got a new uh, ERP system coming as well. And often uh, the, the challenge is that there's different consultancy or external consultants working on the change. Uh, there's just one person responsible for change management within the Watergroep and he's fully dedicated to the ERP trajectory. So what we decided is let's uh, get together, let's mm -hmm. share best practices, let's share what we hear throughout the organization, let's talk about communication so that we com don't communicate all on top of each other, uh, that we don't ask the uh, the, the great ladies at the communication team, oh yeah, we want uh, three infographics at the same time. It's not going to work like that. And what we also felt, uh, I, we all did interviews uh, throughout the organization and we all heard change fatigue, uh, mm -hmm. also a word that we heard this morning. And it's difficult, right, going to your steering committee and saying there's change fatigue. Yeah, but how? Yeah, everyone is, yeah, there's always going to be resistance, right? So they just need to do it. And we tried, okay, let's try to put it into numbers instead of basing this on our gut feeling. And mm. we, we put uh, the, our analysis uh, from, yeah, every strategic project had a change uh, impact analysis. Uh, we brought those together into uh, a heat map. Uh, and that's where we tried to identify, okay, is it correct, the feeling that we have, that we are going to have an impact on the same groups with various strategic programs at the same time? Or is that just, yeah, is, 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 isn't it true? And more, we went even further than that. We also mapped which teams we were going to need from support to help us, because we can talk about stakeholders as the technicians on the road, but ICT needs to be involved too. And every strategic program, there's a lot of digital transformation going on. ICT needs to have um, capability and availability too. And will they be able to assist us with what we're going to ask them? And um, yeah, it turned into a heat map. Uh, and the good thing was that um, we could really see and we could really show our steering committees, okay, yes, there is a lot of change going on at the same time. Please refrain on uh, launching any new strategic programs because people are really satisfied. We will try to, the reality is there, and we as change coordinators, we will try to accommodate this as much as possible. But when people come to you and they say, as a leadership, and they say, okay, we're tired, there's too much change, um, and I think we heard that this morning as well, uh, acknowledge that and know that it's true. It's their reality, and now you can really see it in the numbers as well. Okay, okay. So creating transparency and yeah, all that. transparency and openness. Making it really concrete so you have numbers, figures to show yeah. to the board. That, uh, of course, always helps. Okay. And it's a work in progress. It's never done. Um, so uh, we keep evaluating it. Uh, I actually have an update call tomorrow because we found out that there was a strategic project that we missed. Uh, so we are going to, uh, there wasn't a change coordinator and we're going to have a talk about that tomorrow. And do an update of the heat map. Do an update of the heat map and talk to Hans about it on Thursday. <laughs> yeah. We have a look at the, of the impact of that. Okay, yeah. great, good. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, from Christina Wadicek, did you set any KPIs on the technicians to provide all relevant data? And which ones? Sophie, would you like me to? You can start. Okay, good. So uh, we have uh, KPIs on uh, every of the action tracks uh, and we, we report on them uh, monthly. Uh, because we're talking about data, it's important uh, to know, yeah, is this working, I mean, and we can see it in the system. We have several things that we uh, report back on to the technicians as well. For instance, um, the, the, leak, the, tech, the leak repairing times, there's a clear KPI where we want to um, 
It's ambitious, uh, we're not there yet, but the aim is to uh, prepare a leak within two working days, within two days. But uh, today we're not there yet, and they can see that where they are at. Uh, so it shows them, and of course, um, numbers are just numbers. There's also people behind the numbers, and we take uh, those um, situations into account. We know that there are teams that are understaffed, uh, that don't have enough people uh, to um, to, to yeah, deploy because they have other things to do than just fixing leaks as well. Uh, but yes, we do report on that. I remember when we started this project, eh, we had a kind of an envision phase where we, which helped us to define the change uh, management plan. We started with the benefits map where we really mm -hmm. defined all the benefits of the different tracks. And uh, once we had those and we were aligned with leadership, and eh, because this is also very important that we align uh, within the leadership teams, um, at that point we also defined the KPIs. Uh, but it's important, as Mike said, of course, we need to re Report on that because this is also motivating people. They need to see that there is progression. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So it's not those KPIs are not only there to report on your project and to go to the Stirco, but it's also very important to make sure that you communicate uh, towards the leadership, to the middle management, of course, uh, who is also playing an important role, so that uh, people see that there is progression. So uh, yeah. Are there any questions from the audience? The live audience in the room. But we have a little sneaky look. I believe there's a question up there. Over there in the middle. There was a gentle hand being lifted. <laughs> <laughs> I have eagle eyes. I see you. There we go. I don't know who was first. Yes, it doesn't matter. Just decide. <laughs> So you said that um, Corona, of course, um, provided some challenges, especially for the blue-collar employees. So how do you reach, reach out to them? You said you provided them also SharePoint sites, or did they have an Office 365 account, or did they have mobile phones? Did you provide mobile phones to them? How did you connect them with this new way of working? Um, the good news was the, the image that we showed with the person in the field uh, working on, on the tablet. small tablet laptop. Uh, the good news for our project was that the rollout of those tablets had just been done um, when Corona started. Uh, but we also worked uh, very Q&A based. We just invited them to calls and we said, okay, we can't come to you. Our leadership can't come to you because we're not allowed to come together. Uh, uh, physically, uh, but let's do it virtually. And uh, it was great to see in our Q&A session sometimes uh, when the video was on, you could see the technician in his van uh, with his mobile phone uh, being there to listen in and to uh, to ask questions. And of course, the WAD group also has um, a printed magazine uh, that they still send to their employees every three monthly. Every three monthly? Yeah, every season. Yes, right? every quarter. Yeah. And uh, because the communications team is so enthusiastic about the program, we always got a, a spot uh, in there as well. So we always booked a spot. And that's a magazine that gets, yeah, it, it really gets read well uh, as far as we can hear. Uh, we also made sure that one of the, the pictures that we've shown are from a photo shoot uh, that we did uh, when they needed to repair a really big leak. And we made sure that it made the cover once so that, uh, uh, they knew, okay, something, uh, there's something about the work that I do in here too, yeah. So it's still a mix of print and yeah. digital communication, of course. Uh, but also the Q&As, because we really empowered the middle management to help us to spread the messaging. So first we organized sessions with the middle management to get them up to speed with the project, and then we asked them as well, to facilitate those Q&As. So, because we know that middle management is also crucial when reaching uh, first-line workers. And then, of course, I, we know uh, we still have some work to do, I think, yeah, for them, because I, invi inviting them to an intranet or a, a hub, uh, it's, we have it, uh, it's there, but we also see that we need to still to work uh, to engage them and to make sure that they go there on a regular basis. Eh? So this yeah. is uh, also work in progress. So trying different channels, experimenting. 
yeah. following up on those challenges. Yes. And when there is a lovely news on the Leaky Hub, uh, we also uh, build a message, f uh, for example, at the closed Facebook group. Yeah. And when they recognize themselves in, in those messages, they, they start actions and reactions, and, and then, yeah, they have a way to the, to the Leaky Hub at that way, too. It's not a, a very official channel, but it, it, it helps. It works, that's the main thing. Indeed. Was there a second question in the audience? Oh, there are several questions. Let's take two more questions from the audience. I saw this hand go up first. I'm going to have to arbitrate order, aren't I? Being served by, by two ladies, thank you. Uh, my question would be uh, whether you were experiencing some uh, pressure because uh, on, on the employees because you are uh, trying to get your repairs uh, faster, which means this is more pressure for the employees, and whether you were also considering the quality of the repairs because if you are doing something more quicker, then of course you are comprom might compromise on quality as well as safety of the work. Did you consider these things as well? Thank you. But I think, Mike and Sophie, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not only doing it quicker, it's doing it smarter. I think we really want to detect those lags which are a priority. So, but I will let uh, Sophie uh, yes, explain. Yes, um, it's true, Caroline. Um, um, we, we only can use the, the data when they start uh, their uh, journey, it's called in, in our system, their journey to a place to repair a leak uh, and, and close that journey. But the closing time is ne nevertheless uh, when, when we looked uh, two uh, years ago, but now they know it's reporting, now they want to be, to be the, the best um, uh, yeah, child of the class. Sorry for my English sometimes. <laughs> uh, I don't use it for my work. Um, yeah, because they are involved to the leaky program and, and there is a copy, it's called um, the ILI, and it's, it's mentioned in all channels we use that the ILI must go down. It's also uh, in, in newspapers that the government says the ILI has to be at uh, uh, 0 0.50 at uh, 20, uh, 2025. So we, we need to focus and, and we, we want to challenge between, between the zones to, to make um, the, the administration correct and, and, and as quick as possible and also reserve the, the quality of repairing the, the leaks. But we have also a team for detecting the leaks. It was um, not the case a few years ago, but while detecting the leaks, we, we also need um, um, yeah, more more technicians to to also uh, repair those leaks. So so it's uh, yeah. Um, There's a leaks help coming, me out in English. Uh, leaks coming from different ways. Yeah, and that's what Sophia is saying. And so. we need to we need to uh, make um, uh, a planning on the on the short term to yep. uh, yeah repair all those leaks and and uh, reduce the non revenue water. What's st mm -hmm. still the aim of the leaky projects and from all of the colleagues in distribution and... Yeah. And we also, I think, uh, are experimenting with outsourcing some of the work. Um, in not in repairing leaks, because that's something we really want to leave with people who have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. But for instance, yeah, um, pipelines are um, below ground. I mean, often a meter and a half, or I don't know how, how deep they are, but let's 90 say... 90 centimeters. 90 centimeters, but still you need to dig a hole, you need to fix the leak and repair the street afterwards. And what we've learned then is that for us, the leak stops at the moment that the leak is fixed, so the tube or the pipeline is fixed. It has nothing to do with when the street gets... Uh, uh, filled again, or when the street, uh, when when the the, the hole the that they dig is filled again, and that's important as well that they know that that is a different kind of um, a different kind of assignment, and we can even ask someone else to do that uh, so that they can focus on, on what they do best. Ladies, I'm going to stop us there in yeah. the interest of time, and I know stomachs are going to start grumbling. They're going to get hungry. And we've got we need to give Terry some time. So a very very big warm thank you to all three of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.